welcome to part three of our discussion. Part three will discuss about methods of raising funds. Issue of shares is the most important and popular and easy way of obtaining fixed or long term capital. The share capital is company's own capital which is split into a large number of small equal parts. Each part, each such part is being called a share. Those who purchase these shares are called shareholders. They are the owners of the company. It is the permanent capital for the company as the money raised in the form of shares remains in the, remains in the company uh, up, to the aid, up to the date of winding up. According to the provision of Companies Act 1956, a company can issue only the following, the two type of shares and they are equity shares and preference shares. First of all, equity shares. Equity shares are those which do not impose any obligation on the company to pay fixed rate of dividend to their holders. Equity shares gives voting right to its holders. Equity shareholders are the actual owner of a company. The rate of dividend paid to equity shareholders depends on profit of the company. More profit to the company means more dividend to equity shareholders and less profit to the company means less dividend to the equity shareholders. Equity shareholders are having equity shares are having some features. And number one is uh, permanent capital. Equity shares are the only source for permanent capital for a company. Equity shares capital is uh, redeemable only at the time of liquidation of a com company. And that's why it is per permanent capital. Next one is right to income. Equity shareholders have a claim to the residual income of a company. Residual income means the income left over after paying expenses, uh, interest charges, taxes, preference dividend, etc. Next one is residual claim of our assets. In case of liquidation, equity shareholders are the last to be paid. The assets are used first to settle the claim of the outside creditors and preference shareholders. If anything left, the equity shareholders uh, got the right of our such residue. The next one is voting right. The important features of equity share, share is voting right. Equity shareholders are the actual owner of the company and they participate and vote in annual general meeting for appointing directors. Each equity share carries one vote. And the next and last uh, feature of equity share is limited liability. An equity shareholder's liability is limited to the amount of investment in his respective share. If his shares are fully paid up, he does not have to contribute anything in the event of financial stress or winding of his company. Now, merits of equity shares. The first merit of equity share is a permanent, shares, permanent source of capital. Equity shares are stable and permanent. Permanent source of capital for the company. Uh, capital raised through equity share can be used throughout the time, throughout the life of the company. The next one is, it do not impose any kind of liability. Equity shares do not impose any kind of liability over the company to pay fixed rate of dividend to equity shareholders. The next one is uh, mortgage. No need of mortgage. Assets of company are not mortgaged for raising funds by issuing equity shares. The next merit of equity share is increasing credit, credit, credit worthness. Equity is capital increase credit worthness of the company and increase confidence of the lenders. And the next one is voting right. The important merit of 
equity share is voting right. Equity shareholders enjoy voting right and have say about the affairs of the company. Now, these equity shares also have some demerits. The, the number one demerit is high cost. The cost of issuing equity share is not fixed and it is generally high compared to other sources of finance. The next one is never ensure regular and stable income. Equity shares never ensure regular and stable income to the investors. And the next one is dilution. Issue of additional equity shares dilute the control and power of existing equity shareholders. Uh, another demerits of equity share is tax benefits. Investment in equity shares do not give tax advantage to the equity shareholders since uh, dividends are not tax exempted. Now, another kind of share that is preference shares. According, according to Section 85.1 of Companies Act, preference shares are those shares which carry preferential rights as the payment of dividend at a fixed rate of rate and as to repayment of capital in case of winding up of the company. The rate of dividend on this share is fixed and the dividend on these shares must be paid before any dividend is paid to ordinary shareholders. Features of preference share are number one, claim over assets. Preference shares holders get prior claim on assets on the event of liquidation or winding up, winding up of a company. The next feature is no voting rights. Preference shareholders do not have voting rights. Next one is uh, fixed return. Preference shares are issued at a fixed rate of dividend. The rate of dividend paid to uh, preference shareholders is lower than the rate of dividend paid to equity shareholders. Next one is flexibility. Except redeemable preference shares, all the preference shares are redeemable or convertible. After a fixed period of time, preference shares are redeemed or converted. And next one is a claim on income. Preference shares not only have prior, uh, prior claim on assets at the time of liquidation, but also have prior claim on income or profit. Preference dividends paid is paid before paying any dividend on the equity share capital. There are some merits of preference share. And number one is no voting rights. Preference shareholders no, have no voting right uh, on matters not directly affecting the, their right. And then next one is flexibility in capital structure. The company can maintain flexibility in its capital structure by issuing redeemable preference shares as they can be redeemed under terms of issue. And the next merit of preference share is no burden on finance. Issue of preference shares does not impose a burden on the finance of the company because dividends are paid only if profits are available. Otherwise, no dividend is paid. And the next merit of preference share is no surge on assets. No payment of dividend on preference shares does not create a surge on the assets of the company as is in the case of debenture. Now, this preference share also have some uh, demerits. And number one demerit is high rate of dividend. A company is to pay higher dividend on these shares, that is preference shares, than the prevailing rate of interest on debenture of bonds. Uh, thus, it usually, usually increases the cost of capital for the company. The next demerit is financial burden. All the areas of preference uh, dividend must be paid before anything can be paid to equity shareholders. The companies are under an obligation to pay dividend on such shares. 
it does reduce the profits of equity shareholders and the next demerit is dilution of claim over assets issues of differentiators involves dilution of equity shareholders claim over the assets of the comp company in case of winding up there are some other disadvantages also and uh, they may be adverse effect on credit worthiness the credit worthiness of, of the company is seriously effect, affected by the issue of preference shares and no tax advantage the taxable income is not reduced by the amount of preference dividend while in case of debentures or bonds I, I, the interest paid to them is de deductible in full now another source of business business finance is retain earnings and also called plowing back of profit hanshita uparjan labor punar binuyojan retaining earnings earnings or plowing back, back of profits are the best and cheapest source of finance for a company it refers to the process of retaining part of the company's net profit for the purpose of reinvesting in the business itself retaining earnings are part of equity equity which is sacrificed by the equity shareholders retain earnings retaining retain earnings finally comes to the equity shareholders in the form of enhanced dividend or capital gain for using retaining retained earnings or plowing back of profit a company neither has to pay dividend nor need to pay the principal amount now merits of retain earnings number 1 ready availability a firm having sufficient retain earnings does not have to depend on outsiders for meeting financial requirement they are readily available for the firm next one is less, less expensive because of absence of flotation flotation cost brokerage cost underwriting commission etc retained earning is less costly less costly source of the business of the company next one is no dilution of control using retained earning as a source of finance eliminates the fear of ownership dilution and loss of control by the existing shareholders next one is no surge on assets internal ex, uh, sources of finance never create any surge over the assets of the company this retain earnings also have some limitations number 1 is limited availability the amount of amount which can be raised by a way of retained earnings is limited the amount of retained earnings depends on profit of the company the next demerit is dissatisfaction among investors excessive retained earning means adoption of convertible dividend policy by a company Adop adoption of convertible dividend policy may lead to dissatisfaction dissatisfaction among the shareholders another important source of business finance long term business finance is issue of debentures issue of debenture is another important source of obtaining fixed or long term capital by uh, a joint stock company debentures are the uniform parts of a loan raised by the company a debenture holder is a creditor of the company a fixed rate of interest is paid on debentures the interest on debenture is charged on the profit and profit and loss account of the company Debenture holders are not the owner of the company. There are some merits of debenture. Number one is fixed rate of interest. 
Debentures always carry a fixed rate of interest, which is good for both company and the debenture holders. Debenture holders are assured of a fixed income, and for the company also, the amount of interest to be paid to debenture holders remain fixed. The next merit of debenture is no dilution of control. Unlike equity shares, issue of debenture never dilute the controlling power of equity shareholders because debenture holders do not have voting rights. Then tax benefit. Interest paid on debenture is tax free. Hence, it is one of the cheapest source of long term capital for the company for a company. Then the other main another main merit is trading on equity. Homankot Bebohai. Debentures enables the company to take advantage of trading on equity. It helps in maximizing return on equity and shareholders wealth maximization. And next one is flexibility. Use of debenture brings flexibility to the capital structure of the company as they can be redeemed after a certain period of time. Debentures also have some demerits. Number one, demerit is permanent burden. Since payment of interest to the debentures, debenture holders is fixed, it put a real burden over the company. It becomes risky. It, it, it become risky when profit of the company is low. Another demerit of debenture is weakened credit worthy, uh, creditworthiness. Excessive issue of debentures weakens creditworthiness of the company. It restricts the it restricts the capacity of further borrowings and the other demerit of this debenture is surge of our assets issue of debentures creates surges over the asset the again this again weakens the borrowing capacity of a company coming to another source of long term finance is term loans apart from above mentioned sources there is another source for long term finance and that is long term um, that is term loan provided by the various financial institutions term loans are of two types short term loan and long term loan loan raised for a period of period ranging from 1 to 1 year to 5 years are called short term loan and loan raised for a period uh, above 5 years are called long term loans term loans are raised for long term investment like expansion diversification modernization etc some of the sources of the loans are of the loans that can be raised are uh, ifc idbi icici sfcs etc this term loans also having some advantages and disadvantages among the advantages the cost of term loan is lower than the cost of equity or preference capital term loans do not result in dilution of control term loans are preferred since they are backed by security which the lender prefers there are some that disadvantages namely term loans do not carry voting rights term loans Term loans generally do not represent negotiable securities. Payment of invest, uh, interest and repayment of principles obligatory. Failures to meet these obligations may threaten the existence of the company. Now, coming to short term funds. There are so many methods. There are methods of uh, raising short term funds also among them loan from commercial banks commercial banks are the most important and easy source of providing short term capital to business enterprises to company the institute 
the, uh, they institute the major portion of working capital loans. They are given on the security of tangible and really marketable securities. The main, the main, uh, the main forms in which commercial banks provide short-term finance to business enterprises are loans, cash credits, overdraft, and discounting of bills. This uh, also have some advantages and disadvantages. Among the advantages, procuring loan for from commercial banks is easy and take less time. Since bank loan are taken for short period of time, it does not create permanent liability. Cost of raising loan from commercial bank is also less. There are some also uh, some disadvantages also, uh, namely commercial bank cannot provide funds for a long period. Generally, bank banks serves a high rate of interest, and it is a fixed burden for the company. Sometimes bank demand for personal security from the directors of the company. Now. Another source of raising short-term finance is public deposit. Generally, public are invited to deposit their savings with the company. A company can obtain funds directly from the public. At the time of accepting deposit, the company issue a receipt mentioning amount deposited, date of accepting deposit, rate of interest, date of payment, etc. As compared to banks, companies offer a higher rate of interest on public deposit. On the other hand, for companies, public deposit is cheaper than loan from commercial banks. There are some advantages of public deposit. First of all, low cost. The rate of in uh, interest payable on public deposit by the company is lower than the interest on loans from the banks and other financial institutions. On the other hand, administrative cost of public deposit is lower than the cost of issuing shares and debentures. Then no dilution, dilution of control. Raising of capital through public depo deposit do not dilute control of owners as depositors, depositors do not have putting rights. Then flexibility. Public deposit is a flexible source of finance. It can be used or redeemed as per the financial requirement of the company. No search over the asset. Accepting public deposit does not create any search over the assets of the company and tax advantage. Inter interest paid on deposit is deductible expense for income tax purpose. There are also some disadvantages. Number one, uncertain. Public deposits are uncertain from uh, form of finance, short-term sources. Generally, public uh, deposit is available for short-term financing. Uh, not a sufficient source. These are a certain strict. Uh, there are a certain strict regulation on the acceptance and renewal of public deposit. So a company cannot raise unlimited amount from public deposit. Then another one is no security. In case of public deposit, the depositors are not secured. Since they have no charge over the assets of the company, they are unsecured creditor of the company. And uh, next one is difficult for new companies. Raising funds from public deposit is not a suitable way for the new companies as they lack public confidence. There are, there are also some other sources of raising short-term funds and they include indigenous bankers, uh, depreciations, debt credit, government loan and assistance, customers advance, etc. So we have discussed here uh, in this discussion about various dimensions of business finance. In part one, we have discussed about the meaning of uh, business finance, uh, financial requirements of business. In part two, various sources of business finance we have discussed elaborately. And in part three, we have discussed various methods of raising funds. And 
the next class will be on financial planning thank you thank you all